Tiger and Crane Episode 10 begins, where Husey and his three friends, Xiaoxuan, Brick, and Zintong, are on a quest to find the horse demon to prove himself innocent in Shan Cha's murder case. Walking in the street and searching, they encounter Mr. Cheng, who accuses Husey of being a murderer who is roaming out in the open. While he should be jailed for the heinous crime, he incites anger in the people to attack him. Husey tries to calm himself down, but he suddenly runs forward to attack Mr. Cheng. To avoid a definite fight, Brick stops him, and Zintong warns Cheng to prepare himself for the worst consequences if he attacks Husey. Finally, Brick comes forward, formally apologizes to Cheng, and takes him aside. He had promised Cheng to help him, so he gave him a book containing legendary magic secretly. Cheng silently goes away, but Husey sits down in despair after his departure. He has only two days left before his incarceration. These days, he has to prove himself innocent and find the real murderer, the horse demon. Now, Xiaoxuan plans to revisit the street where Husey found the horse demon to find any clues. Brick and Zintong decide to investigate the nearby shopkeeper about the demon. On the other hand, Xing Zai informs Fairy about Husey, saying he has only one day. If he fails to prove himself innocent, then he will be jailed. Telling them this, he asks Fairy if they should help him. But Fairy refuses, as Husey's punishment is not their concern. Suddenly, Fairy looks at the pretty flower in the bushes. She is saddened as she misses the master, who always loved this flower. As she picks up the flower in her hand, she orders Zing Zai to decorate the whole garden with this flower. She affectionately touches her face with the flower and mourns that a life cycle passes swiftly. On the other hand, Zai Oxuan and Husey revisit the same street where Husey was attacked. After finding no leads, they go to the nearby shopkeepers to see where the demon would have gone. The goofy shopkeeper keeps selling his stuff and has never heard of a horse demon before. While Husey keeps his eyes on the surroundings to look for a suspicious stranger, suddenly, he notices someone hiding under a big black cloak, just like a horse demon hides himself. He immediately follows the man, and Sai Oxuan takes another route, and finally, they surround him. After removing his black cover, they find a man under it with a sack. He was a child trafficker who was kidnapping a kid in his sack. They arrest the man while Zintong and Brick make a rough sketch of the horse demon and ask the shopkeeper about it. A horrible sketch terrifies simple shopkeepers. They wander the streets until the night falls. That night, a group of royal sorcerers marched in the street while one of them separated from its crew and met a covered stranger. In the next moment, when the stranger attacks and tries to suffocate him, he dodges the attacker and runs away. In the street, he finds Zintong and informs her that he is running from the horse demon. Zintong grabs her spear and gets ready to confront the horse demon. She skillfully deflects all his attacks while her friends learn about the horse demon from other soldiers. They run to aid Zintong, but horse demons flee before their arrival. It was the second time he escaped, and Zintong suggested checking all the royal sorcerers one by one if they wanted to catch the horse demon. It's an aggressive strategy, but to save citizens from a lethal demon, they decide to do it. Xiaoxuan and his friends get inside the gate after arguing with the guards. They check the shoulder of each sorcerer to find the one whose shoulder was injured the night the horse demon attacked. But there was no sign of injury to any of them. Only one of the royal sorcerers is absent. But in the next minute, that sorcerer appears and shows his shoulder, which had no injury, too, and for aggressively checking them, he warns Xiaoxuan of a punishment. Xiaoxuan appears before HSI, the father and chief of the Kai clan, and apologizes for searching for the sorcerers to find the horse demon. The senior sorcerers highly condemn Xiaoxuan's act, as it will make them a laughingstock in front of the other sorcerers. The chief gets angry and asks Xiaoxuan's sister Yanren to confiscate Xiaoxuan's token. She happily steps forward, and the chief announces that he is no longer a commander. Now, he has to prove Husey's innocence without the token privilege until midnight. Husey tries to cheer Xiaoxuan up after he learns that he has been demoted to the rank of commander for the first time. At the same time, Yanren mocks him, saying that he can never prove himself better than her to be a worthy heir to the throne. Xiaoxuan ignores her and grabs his grandma's hand. She feels sorry for him, as Xiaoxuan's father is too hard on him. So, she informs him that she will help him solve the case. As their last chance, they decide to distribute food among the citizens to find any suspicious person in the crowd. Suddenly, a little boy asks Xiaoxuan to help him find his sister. Surprisingly, Xiaoxuan finds his sister, Mu, and is distributing food to the poor. It's amazing to see a very polite courtesan Mu. He shares with her that they are looking for a demon and suspect that it's hiding in disguise as a royal sorcerer. Suddenly, the rain begins and she brings an umbrella for him. 
They share a mesmerizing moment of affection, but realizing the situation's sensitivity, Zai Akshuan swiftly walks away. They all reach the grandmother and search for the record of the demon burning the pagoda. It appears that each time a demon is imprisoned, a sorcerer disappears. That means something is wrong in the demon burning pagoda, and grandmother needs three to five days to conduct a full investigation. But since the deadline is tonight, she decides to immediately ask the chief to investigate the matter. As they go, Husey thinks that if the demon burning pagoda holds demons, his mother may also be one of them. Husey remains silent and delves into his thoughts while his friends gather and assure him they are ready to be with him at any time. They assure him of their support. Husey appreciates and comes out of the sorcerer's inn, aiming the guard of the demon burning pagoda at the gate. Zyokshuin also joins him, and they swiftly combat the flying arrow, and after a while, many guards surrounded them to stop their advancement. After defeating them, they pass by them and enter the main hall where the head of the demon-burning pagoda Zhang taunts that he is not happy about their doubts about the pagoda. He assures me that he has been efficiently guarding the premises for years, and there is no chance any demon escaped, but they can look to assure themselves of the truth. Xi Oxuan goes inside the area where Zhang keeps demons in cages. Suddenly, Zhang looks for a suspicious herb and throws it into the fire. After looking around and finding nothing, Zai Oxuan apologizes for breaking into the premises, but Jang wants to take the matter to the Council of Elders. As they come out, they agree on one thing, that Jang is suspicious. Herbs were not ordinary, they needed to go to the ghost market to find the correlation. They march into the drunken hall and reach Mu, who surprisingly already holds the herb in her hand. She informs them of the quality of the herb, which is lethal for humans but an excellent medicine for demons, and recovers their external wounds in no time. Now she has received the news that a large quantity of this medicine was recently removed from the market. While it's not easy to achieve this precious herb in the first place, Brick appreciates Mu, and Zai Oxuan wants to pay for her valuable knowledge. But she declines the offer with a smile and reminds him that he can join her anytime for a relaxed evening. Zai Oxuan gets nervous and walks away while Jang kills a royal sorcerer in the demon burning pagoda and puts its soul in a crystal container in a secret chamber. Someone should warn him to work more discreetly to avoid being caught. They reach Jang's room to look for proof that he is the horse demon and find the herbs under the furniture. Xintong sniffs the smell around the room and confirms that it resembles the smell of the horse demon. She knows as she passed it so closely the day she fought it. Suddenly, they hear Jang return and turn off the light to hide. Episode 11. Jang enters the room and turns on the lights. Each one of them hides themselves while he straightaway goes to fetch the herb from under the furniture. Brick flinches away, but after getting the herb, Ch Nag burns it and puts it in the small pot. The fumes that emerge from it are pungent, and Husey hardly stops himself from sneezing. Finally, Jang leaves the room, and they are disappointed that they cannot find any proof against him being the horse demon. Suddenly, Xiaoxuan finds a mane on the floor and confirms with the royal sorcerer that it matches the horse mane they saw where the horse demon attacked the last time. All of them present before the chief and present the horse mane as proof. They also shared that an herb in his hand can heal wounds. Master opposes them, as he cannot believe that Zhang can be a demon himself. In all these years when he served the demon burning pagoda, he never failed to comply with any challenge. But the chief decides to search the pagoda's premises and, with his soldiers, reach where Zhang is burning a demon. He bows conventionally before the chief and taunts that these young men have already searched and found nothing. Husey annoyingly asks him to admit his crime already. He gives him the herb that smells the same as Pagoda. Jang mocks him because he uses many ways to ward off smells. Also, he knows nothing about the horse mane found on his premises. Jang blames Zai Oxuan and his friends for wrongly framing and accusing him of a grave sin. Brick suggests that Jang put his hand in legendary flames to prove him innocent. As a demon, his hand will turn green and burn alive. Without hesitation, he puts his hand in the fire, and after a while, Chief pushes his hand away. The Chief gets angry at Zai Oxuan and Husey and immediately orders guards to take him to prison. Cunning Zhang smiles after everyone leaves the room. Because he was a water spirit, he changed the flame's color and hid his identity as a demon. Husey cannot control his anger that a dangerous demon has wrongly imprisoned them. Grandma knows they are innocent but can only help them by reducing the sentence. On the other hand, Mu looks at the handkerchief and smiles, remembering the day she shared an umbrella with Zai Oxuan. Suddenly, her servant shares the terrible news of Zai Oxuan's imprisonment. She orders her servant to dispatch the kits to the capital. Zhang keeps another demon spirit in the crystal jar and steps out. Brick gets drunk because he cannot save his friends, but he does not notice that the horse demon is looking at him from a corner. As he emerges from the pub, Mu gives him Jang's daily routine, 
which will help him gather proof of his friend's innocence. As he walks swiftly after getting the papers, suddenly Zhang stands in front of him in the clothes of the horse demon. But before killing him, he changes his face to a horse demon's. Suddenly, Xiaoxu and Huzi and Xintong surround him, along with many guards. While inspecting the demon burning pagoda, they found a crystal jar opened and thrown aside. By inspecting the traces of souls in it, they confirmed that Zhang used to burn sorcerers in a demon-burning pagoda. Grandma orders him to surrender, but he flies away. They split up to chase Zhang, but he keeps running, until Xiaoxuan follows him into a barn, where he attacks him with a sharp knife and he falls. On the other hand, Mu's hand is pricked by a thorn, and she knows something is wrong. She reaches out to protect Xiaoxuan, and Zhang uses all his powers to kill him, which he has fetched from the sorcerers. But at the same time, Mu steps forward and uses her flower magic to make a protective shell around Xiaoxuan. Suddenly, Xiaoxuan emerges from the shell and pierces his sword into Zhang's body in combat. As ZHNG falls, Xiaoxuan asks her to leave, as he finds out that Mu is a flower demon. If he does not flee, royal sorcerers will arrest her but she sadly reveals her feelings of love for him. Suddenly, Zhang stands up again, and before he can attack Xiaoxuan with his magic, Mu gets in the way. The rays injure her, and with teary eyes, she gives her life in the hands of her beloved Xiaoxuan and becomes a flower. The petals flew in the air after her demise. The owner of the inn is not happy with the fact that Mu is a demon. She did not understand that she had a great heart. Mu's servant brings Xiaoxuan a box with a handkerchief. He is surprised to see that he used his handkerchief many years ago to practice his sword against butterflies in the flower garden. He sadly closes the box. Upon their return, Chief and Grandma find that Zhang has freed the demon's souls. The Chief returns to his chamber and shares the news with the elders that all the demons, including the demon lord, are free. Master feels embarrassed for not recognizing Zhang's intentions and accepts full responsibility. The Council of Elders trusts Chief and Xiaoxuan, who killed Zhang. But for now, they plan to search all three halls to search for thousands of escaped demons. But the suggestion is to keep this a secret from the public. It would create panic in them while it was evident that the demons were hiding in the city. And if the Council of Elders does not decide on the matter soon, it can harm the entire city. The Council of Elders suggests keeping the search a secret, or the public will hold them accountable. It's unfathomable for Xiaoxuan that elders are still more concerned about their reputation than public safety. But the chief silenced him while the elders suggested that they close the city gates. With the announcement, in light of the upcoming sorcerer's exam, they are securing the city from outsiders. That is the only way they can make up for the mistake. Master wants the elders to decide upon his matter, as he wants himself imprisoned on the matter of Yanlu Hall. The chief hesitates to decide this, but Mater urges him and the elders to decide on the matter quickly. They accept the master's responsibility and decide that the matter will not be made public to avoid panic. The exam will be held as it was. After everyone leaves the room, the master hands over his badge to the chief. That ensures his duties in the sorcerer halls are over forever. On the other hand, Grandma suspects a traitor is among them in the demon-burning pagoda. She is not sure, but she knows one thing. No one entered from outside to open the demons. It's an inside job. She decides to investigate the matter. Brick and Husey want to celebrate their victory, but Xiaoxuan does not have the right mind. He still has to handle things, and he asks them to focus on their exam while still having a lot on his nerves. On the other hand, Cheng stops Brick and Husey and mocks them for being friends with a demon. After all the disturbance in the city, they feel no hesitation in telling him that Mu helped them defeat and kill Zhang. Episode 12 Xiaoxuan sadly stands in front of a wilted flower and thinks that no flower is real. Then, her maid enters the room with one bird. The bird was not eating or drinking well in his absence, so she brought it out now that the weather was nice. Soon after, his sister enters the room with the conventional malice on his face about her brother. She abhors grandma's constant support for Xiaoxuan and is eager to watch him become his father's descendant. She reprimands and humiliates him, for whatever happened is to blame on him. Tired of his sister's criticism, he asks her to leave. But she keeps degrading him by reminding him of his childhood, where he was more merciful, and avoided killing innocent creatures. She always connected his soft nature to cowardice and warned him she would never let him be the chief. His parrot says that Zion and Yan are good brothers, and this sentence takes him back to the past. When he first got the parrot, he healed it. From that time on, he has been taking care of this bird. While in the Sorcerer's Inn, Chang and Husey still argue over useless matters. When a girl comes inside searching for her cat, Cheng stops fighting and asks his helpers to help the lady find her cat. 
After a while, the cat jumped on Husey's shoulder and he could hardly control himself from jumping up. He is not quite familiar with pets. The girl takes the pet and announces that Sorcerer's Academy is holding the preliminary class tomorrow for all the students. They are invited to attend. While walking outside, Zintao asks them what section they will choose as sorcerers. To her surprise, Husey also wants to go to Yanlao Hall, where he must delve into the secrets of demons from many hundred years. They are surprised at his choice, but he shares that killing demons is fun. But in fact, he wants to know about his mother by reading all that stuff about demons. They stop in front of a stock of weapons and select one for themselves. While the eldest master watches Husey choose one for himself, he remembers what Fairy told him about Husey. The greatest weapon is concealed inside his own body, and they need to take the shell of Ferba to its full potential. On the other hand, the royal sorcerers infiltrate the whole ghost market. The shopkeepers have a clue that they are looking for a living thing but they don't know exactly what it is. Xiaoxuan wants a shopkeeper to bring him something from the demon-burning pagoda. Before the shopkeeper could reply, Xiaoxuan walked away quickly as if he remembered something. On the day of orientation, Husey does not arrive on time. The same pretty girl who announced the preliminary class arrived. Chang eagerly walks towards her to talk, but she hits him so severely in the face. It turns out that she is going to conduct the orientation class. She announces that there are three days left before the final exam but now she wants to play a game with them. Anyone who catches the ball will become the royal sorcerer without any exam. But as she throws the cap in the air, a strange man catches it. No one knows him, but then she tells the real story. Anyone who reaches Beihua Mountain and gets 100 demon pearls first will win. Cheng immediately goes to Zintong to form a team, but she sternly refuses, and at the exact moment, Husey comes there. Cheng burns in rage to know that she wants to choose Husey over him to make a team. The teacher intervenes and dismisses the class. On the other hand, Fairy has decided to activate the first stage of Furba in Husey's body. Mo gets up after sleeping and begins sneezing. Mu, braiding a rope, immediately gets up to help her sit on the bed. Mu gets grumpy and wants to see it immediately, and in this fight, Mu falls on her bed. After a romantic moment, Mu immediately gets up and promises to show it whenever he completes it. Husey trains with the eldest master to handle his Furba. The Furba is so powerful that he cannot hold it in his hand and ultimately falls. The eldest master wants to teach him that fairy's message for him is to learn to control his Furba, or it will control him. Mater asks him to hold it until the sun sets while he rests. Mo puts food on her cat's plate and advises Mu to talk and interact more with people to look less strange. But Mu does not like many people and likes to live in silence. But he admits that of all the people he likes, Mo is better. Fusey keeps holding the buckets in his hands, and contrary to Zintong, he feels terrible pain in his arms holding them. But at the same time, he cannot let Zintong win. Rick asks them to leave the bucket for lunch. Zintong drops the bucket to have lunch while Husey keeps holding it. After some time, his furba begins empowering his arms. With a great noise, he throws his bucket. Hearing the voice, Mater arrives and mocks him for being unable to accomplish a simple exercise. But before the master could finish talking, Husey ran to the lunch table. The eldest master follows Husey and touches his chest to take furba out of his hand. Surprisingly, he is holding it in his hand like a toy. But here, Master announces that he will keep holding one Furba in his hand while sleeping. Under his training, Husey easily defeated Brick in the first fight. Husey's tough training continues even when he is asleep. Eldest Master and Brick help him train very well. Finally, exam day approaches, Mo advises the players to follow Mu's lead and ask him about any problems. They all take a note and go to the mountain. But Brick did not see that while taking the paper, Cheng replaced his paper. Mo kisses Mu on the cheeks, the students go for the demon pearls. Brick and his friends follow the map and reach a different mountain. They cannot believe the lead on the map was wrong. But when Brick told them it was the last map he picked after Cheng, they knew that Cheng had replaced their map. But when they walk back to get on the right track, a bunch of soldiers stop them from going ahead on that track. Suddenly, Brick sees a torn piece of map on the ground and picks it up. Zintong sees a mountain with hanging ropes. She knows that Beihua Mountain was used for fun. But after the demon's invasion, it was deserted, so she is pretty sure that they will get the demon pearls beyond this mountain. All the students fight fearlessly with the bees for pearls, but Cheng uses his helpers to bring him pearls. Sitting comfortably aside, he ensures that Husey and his companions have not reached there. On the other hand, Husey enters the cave, and a bunch of bees fly from it. After the bees pass, they enter the cave. With the help of the pointed stick that Husey gave them, they started collecting pearls by piercing the bees' bodies. Suddenly, they see an enlightened part of the cave where many pearls are kept. 
they pick as many as they want and begin their journey to return to Mo. Fairy arrives with her companion to see Husey's performance. Mo hides herself from Fairy's sight, who flies a bee in the air. On the other hand, Xiaoxuan goes to watch the Red Pearl, which is found to have cracks on its surface. The border is heavily guarded to prevent demons from escaping and if anyone tries to flee, they capture it immediately. Tiangin Hall's chief investigated the presence of Fairy in the capital. While he roams around the area, he feels the very powerful presence of a demon in the abandoned cages. On the other hand, Mo stops Fairy from interrupting the exam process because she just watched Fairy release a hundred-year-old bee, which would interrupt the play. Since she saw Fairy release the bee, she decided to kill Mo on the spot to hide this secret. Like this video and let me know if you are excited for next part.